start rolling. Uh, cool. Welcome to a live question and answer. So on this, yeah, we'll just have everybody uh, put your questions into the chat. Yeah, into and, the chat. Um, and then we'll answer everybody's one by one. It'll just be open format, whatever kind of questions you have. Um, just ask them and then we'll come to you one by one. Or you can unmute yourselves if you'd like, and then we can discuss further. Yep, 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 yep. Um, obviously, the main reason why Justin and I are doing this call is because one, we want all of you to succeed and we want to make sure you have a, a, a platform or an opportunity for yourself to ask questions because um, we know how things get moving pretty quick in the discord right and we're bounced around from one thing to another so you know questions are always good there's never a bad time to ask a question but obviously if you can do it outside of market hours you'll be able to have um maybe more explanation or just more time for people to respond right so just know if, so if someone doesn't respond to your question right away it's not because they don't want to it's just that there's usually a lot going on um so yeah <clears throat> we'll start with um we'll start with jason's question um i'd like to go over a gap up i think i'm lost on aal go to aal i think he's talking about the daily um chart yep so if you look there is a gap to be filled up to it's probably going to hit this candle for some yeah. resistance but tip the, the actual whatever the bottom of that candle is what 1907 1907 the which previous day before the gap down it, yeah. it is also the beginning of the volume shelf yeah so technically 1907 would be the gap fill up you would have to have a new daily candle touch that uh level 1907 okay you would have to have that touch that candle to actually fill the gap up. Okay. And if it, if a, I would say, so the top of the gap, or I'm sorry, the bottom of the gap to fill up would be that red candle, the top of the wick, right? Of that down candle. So that is 1872. So it's like a 30 point, I'm sorry, 30 point, 30 cent, 30 cent gap to fill, but we know 30 cents on AAL. If that moves pretty quickly, that could be a nice contract. Uh, move for you um, for playing the option side. Absolutely. So, so Jason, if it, any any close above eighteen seventy two, any close above eighteen seventy two, right, um, would be entering the gap, and then the gap to be actually filled would be nineteen oh seven. Okay, nineteen oh seven. That would be an actual technical gap fill. All right. I mean, it's on a very solid uh, support level right here. Yeah, because I think this is when it COVID. Which I think be, it was just an overreaction. Honestly, it was a huge overreaction to the variant. And then all of a sudden Biden comes out and says, what? We're not going to do any like restriction to travel or anything like yeah. that. Just like, OK, green, like buyers were back in. OK, so um, Jason, hopefully that answers your question. Appreciate you with the pants emoji. Go get some starch while you're out. All right, cool. Um, my okay, no, 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 no. Brian Perlin says, can you call out your plays with entry price plus risk? For example, entry 45, stop 43, risk is two. Um, I don't know if that's to me or Justin. As far as, I don't know, Brian, if you want to explain that a little bit more, like, are you wanting, like, like, I guess what you're trying to say is like, you're trying to figure out how much we're risking where our risk is probably going to be a little bit different than what you're going to be willing to risk. If that makes sense, because none of the accounts. Are well, the no, I mean, I makes sense. Cause you're risking, you're saying, yeah, you're pretty much saying like, okay, I'm risking this much for this reward. Right. So essentially our reward would be whatever the stock that, losses, the is resistances, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your risk, it's the risk to reward. So like, the like pretty much where yeah our stop loss or like where the next support level is should be close to where you're buying in if that okay. makes sense i got it. so like let's say you're buying so like let's say support is like let's say like major support is like uh like 45 right but you know like there's a little bit of room below it for it to dip to 43 but you want it to get like you think it's going to bounce to 50 so are you saying you're going to risk two to have a reward of five? Is that what? Yeah, that I think that's exactly okay. what he's saying. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that what you're saying, Brian? 
I think he said trying to get familiar with entry points. He said, right. Yes. Okay. So um, it sounds like this, I don't know if this is more of a commons thing because how I always play is I'm looking to buy where there's going to be support. Okay. And I'm always going to sell where I believe that there's going to be resistance or, or I get to a percentage, um, a percentage gain. Okay. So like, let's say I think like in this $45 example that you, you mentioned above um, where you're saying, Hey, you know, supports at 45, we're going to look to get in. If it goes to 43, I cut it, but I'm going to try to sell it for profit at 50. Right. Because I would assume that 50 is resistance and 45 is support. Right. Am I right, Justin? Am I, yeah. am I saying that right? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Okay. So like, yeah, that's how I would look at that. So basically you're risking $2 to make $5 for every one share or contract. If you're you, whichever side you're going to play. Um, or you could look at it. It's like, or like, it's like a two to one or three to one risk. Like people will play, will only play plays depending on like, if it's like a three to one or a yeah. four to one or a two to one risk, essentially. Yep. No, I, I get, I, I get that. I understand that. Oh, right. I see, yeah. I see. I would just, it's all how, how Justin and I pretty much mainly trade is just support and resistance levels. Well, I, figure out. Oh yeah, go ahead. Because it, yeah, it's pretty much like I guess it's like that. Definitely works for a lot. I think Walker in the group that works for him a lot, uh, where they want it like like some some people want to see that like okay, I'm risking, yeah, two to one. You know, so I'm going to make you know twice to lose one essentially my risk to reward right. So yeah. a, lot, a lot of people's brains work like that, but um, I guess mine. Mine just, I just like look for the, for the support I'm buying in. Um, if it breaks, I'm going to cut quick. So I'm not really, I don't know. I mean, I've kind of gotten to the point where my reward is always, it's like more, I win a lot more than I lose. So it's like more, yeah. where if it does go south, then it's like, I know how to cut quick, like really quick. Yeah. I don't know, my, my brain doesn't have work, work like playing two to one or three to one or four to one. Yeah, because everybody, everyone's de risk is defined differently. Like, like in, okay, so for example, for this example of the $45, where the 43 is the stop and the, the um, target profit exit is 50, right? If you're like, okay, I want to get to 50 or 5%, okay? Well, if you buy at, um, or no, 50, I'm sorry, or 10%, I want 10% profit or I want it to get to 50, right? So if you buy at 45 exactly, Technically, 49 and 50 cents is 10%. So you hit 10% first, so you could sell, right? And if it goes to the other 50 cents to 50, it doesn't matter. You hit your, you hit your, your, um, your target. You, 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 you planned and executed the trade that you wanted, right? And you were able to risk the dollar amount for the reward. I hope that, does that make sense, Brian? I think you're asking if we if we if we trade R to R, but in reality we just trade through support and resistance. Hopefully, I think Justin, I think we hit that right. Yeah, I mean, I understand what he's talking about because people. No, I know, I get what you're saying too. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, hopefully that helps. Brian, is that a, you give us thumbs up, thumbs down? Yes, no. I I personally trade like. Um, percentage or when I get to resistance and like I, I'll give an example like on spy today I'm um, like the second time we got on the calls right we got in it was like um you know 464 or something like that spy was and I knew there was resistance at at uh 465.50 I was like that's a big level it's probably going to magnet to that right and it did it went up to that and my goal is I have a target profit zone actually like price on the chart and then i say but if i get a hundred percent i cut it i cut it that's like normally my rule like or if i get a hundred percent of my contracts i cut them even if it's only moved and it's still like a dollar away from where i think my resistance is well today i said because i had a losing trade earlier in the morning i said i need 60 percent. i need 60 percent on this trade so i said it's either going to get to 465.50 or i'm going to i'm going to take profits at 60 percent right so I can make up for my trade this morning. So it got within 20 cents of my resistance, 
Okay. And I sold, I sold for 61%. Okay. Well, that contract ended up going, you know, ended up going 200%. You know what I mean? It went up going to, but I didn't care because my goal was to get 60% or let it get to my actual, um, or let it get to my actual resistance level. Right. So hopefully that's like a, a just like a risk management little overview. You can see how I trade um, and how I assess my risks, right, to reward. So I don't know, Justin, if you want to add anything on that. But Brian, hopefully we answer your question, brother. Um, if not, feel free to explain a little bit or, um, you know, give a little bit more info on it um, or ask any other additional questions. Hopefully, hopefully, Brian, hopefully that helped. No response. I'm going to assume a thumbs up then. Um, okay. Okay. Um, oh, wait. Shit. Let me go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Justin's iPhone says buy ADMP at 79 cents today. Call out mentioned 80 cents. So my buy was. So my buy-in and my buy-in is good? Question um, mark. I'm assuming that's on your guys's common side, Justin. Oh shit, my bad. I that thing. I was muted the whole time. I was like, I feel like he's probably <laughs> muted. I, I had a feeling. I think he's probably muted. I was oh about to God. say something. Uh, my bad. Oh, uh, sorry. It's just all quiet. Like <laughs> no, uh, I was like, I think he's muted. Uh, no, yeah, my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the whole the whole trade plan is still in play, for sure. So we're still swinging it. Hopefully that it gets a a little bump at some point, a little bit more attention. Yep. Okay, cool. So, okay. So the buy-in is good. Buy-in is good. Yep. 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 Guys. And the buy-in will always be good. It's up to you too, because you plan the trade like Justin's trade where he could say like, okay, I think supports at 80 cents and I'm going to buy in there. Right. And you're like, well, you know what, Justin, I think 77 cents is actually the real, you know, res or support and I'm going to buy there. Right. But at the end of the day, if it goes back to a dollar, like, was, was one of you right and one of you wrong? Like, no, you both made money and you made money based off like what you planned and how you planned the trade and how you executed it, right? Like I made, you know what I mean? Like I made 60% today. I could have like, it, it, am I wrong for selling because someone else sold for 200%? It's like, no, it's you're right or wrong to your individual accounts, right? You're right or wrong to your individual accounts. Always be selfish in that sense to always doing what's best for your account. Okay. And I know it gets hard sometimes because we've got a lot of people making a lot of money all the time. Um, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people making a lot of money, so it can get a little overwhelming when you, you know, you want to make some money too, but guys always do what's best for your account. All right. <clears throat> so be selfish in that sense. <clears throat> Excuse <me>. Jesus. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, but about also curious overall thoughts on Prague. If you didn't want to give DD on specific stock, wait, DD on a specific stock. That's cool. Um, yeah, you want to look at Prague? Is that another one you guys played, Justin? Um, we have. I mean, yeah, I mean, it has to hold its view up, essentially. I don't, I don't know any catalysts on it. I only play for momentum on these, so I'm not a person that sits there and on Prague. But looking at the four hour, it looks like it's basing out again, for sure, um, on the support. If it fails, yeah, like 285, 
287. Doesn't look good. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, so if you have this and you're holding still, yeah, it looks like it's definitely on a support. You know, this is where a bottom was before. So hopefully it holds here and you can recoup some gains back. Oh, can you let, um, Justin, is there someone in the waiting room? Is there? Oh, my bad. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, guys. I mean, ideally, at least it bounced back to like three. I mean, 343 is not really anything, but. Yeah, I don't know. I just have to wait and see. Okay, okay. Okay, got you guys in. Thanks for waiting, guys. Sorry, we got the rolling. Um, we weren't checking it. Um, glad to have you in. Only just started. <clears throat> okay, so let me see. Let me see. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, but the last thing I'd say is, yeah, it's like it's building on this support back here that it had before this big run. So hopefully this is where it does find support and we can get some sort of reversal going i think i'm pretty sure there's catalyst coming up too yep um okay so brizzy asked bought, bought amc option calls 38 dollars strike looks like it's going on a downtrend now thought it could have bounced with the news but it seems like it's hit with covid news probably question mark personal thoughts let me look i haven't even looked personally i don't really fuck with the memes um, Brizzy, I think there's many, many, many other things that you can trade that you can make way better gains on. Um, plus, I don't know, this usually seems like there's just some fuckery going on behind the scenes with the memes and synthetic shares and dilution and, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Manipulation, whatever. It just it, it just seems kind of weird to me. But Justin, hit, hit AMC real quick. Um, I just want to take a look at it. Stair step it down. Was this the one hour? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To me, it looks like it's making its way down, for sure. You see those stair steps. Um, it's on a pretty big volume shelf. I mean, personally, I'll, I'll ask you this. Like, I know you're asking us for our like personal thoughts, but like, like for you. Like, um, and I'll tell this to everybody, like you want to make sure that before you even get into a trade, it's like, what is your plan for the trade, right? What is your plan for the trade? So if you were trading, said thought it could have bounced on the news and it didn't bounce on the news, right? So then part of your plan should have been if the news hits and it does not bounce or get buyers or go higher and the overall market is still up pretty big, right and there's buyers everywhere then like maybe i then i cut right because the move didn't happen as anticipated and that's okay that's okay so it's not bad to have a wrong trade right it's bad to not be disciplined though. does that make sense so you know defining your trade right like if you're like i was playing the news but if you were like hey this looks like it's going to technically break out because it's a big flag, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's a technical side. Then like, okay, it didn't break out right after you bought it, but like, did you buy time on the contract? You know, are you allowing yourself time for it to take off? You know, is it a weekly? Is it a monthly? You know, you need to make sure that like you also plan your trade and you trade the plan to me, honestly, though, if Justin, if you drew like a trend line up from like this August 2nd date, like that dip, you know what I mean? Like, on this bottom side from there and then just all the way. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's to me, I would just say that looks like it's holding to me. Um, you know, if it goes underneath though, if it were to go underneath the, the dip down, um, yeah, it looks like it's just going to keep getting tighter and tighter. It's technically higher lows still. Right. Well, I don't know. You, I guess you wouldn't want to dip under the, the uh, what is that, October 18 area. That dip, yeah, I wouldn't want to dip under there. If you start falling under that, then, yeah, it's probably time to cut it, right? And don't, don't, don't base your trade off of hopium either, right? Hopium is, well, I hope it goes back up, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Um, God, who asked that? Damn it. 
Oh, Brizzy. Good question, though. Good question, because if you were trading, like your trade plan was solely off the news, then like, hey, it didn't bounce off the news. Okay, no problem. Right. And I think you're talking about the NFT news. Okay. And it didn't break. Okay. Okay. No problem. Now, if you bought yourself, like, I don't know what your date was that you bought, you know, if they're like January calls, then like, okay, you've got time for this thing to still technically, you know, bounce back up. And to me, it looks like it probably, if it bounces off this trend on this bottom, like of the pennant, it's probably going to go back to 40 ish. Right. Probably back to 40 ish. All right. So whoa, who was that again? Damn it. Oh, Brizzy, Brizzy, Brizzy. If that helped thumbs up, let me know if you have anything additional to that question. Um, feel free to ask additionally, but always, 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 always plan the trade, plan it, plan it, plan it. Okay. And then you, uh, trade the plan. I'm going to say that a million times, a million, a million, a million, a million. Plan the trade, trade the plan, plan the trade, trade the plan. Everyone gets tired of it. I promise. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see who else. Someone said, oh, my question. Okay, it's Brian. It's a good question. Okay, for average averaging down on uh, on an option swing example, Disney. So we're in the January 21, uh, 170 calls on Disney. Um, would you wait for more of a confirmation of reversal? Right. So if we're looking at Disney here, um, and we'll just go to like you know, the weekly. So I think we we spoke about a level at like 147-ish. Um, and I think we spoke about it, I think it was yesterday, um, kind of where it's at right sermon. now. Yeah, we did. Speak, speak. So yeah, we, yeah. So right where it's at right now, you could see the body of both of the candles are holding this 147, 148 level, which if you date back, used to be resistance over here. And then it broke through it, retested, and then made new highs, right? So we know this 147 slash 148, not to the penny, but like in that area, has held, Okay. So Brian, for for us on this swing, right? Like because it did, it had a nice, you know, a nice gain back today after dipping even lower. I would definitely want to have this like 140, 140, you know, 147 level hold, especially where the bodies are, the bottom of both of those bodies, those daily bodies. I want both of those to hold. Okay. Um, and as long as they hold, then we can definitely add down to the position. But it, like, you know, you don't want to buy it and it keeps on dipping, right? And it sounds to me like now that the COVID thing is kind of cleared up as far as the president speaking on it, um, as far as people talking about um, no restrictions to travel, no um, um, no additional mandate shutdowns, all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Then obviously the park will remain open, okay? And I think that was probably the biggest scare, right? Because obviously all those travel airlines, um, they had the, the huge, huge, huge sell-offs from like, You're break? potentially yeah. having to have to close down again, right? Um, so, yeah, Brian, because <laughs> I'm watching this level, too. I've got, like, 147.68 is what I'm watching. Um, it's, like, a big, big level on mine. So, as long as that holds, I'll probably be adding because I'm in the same swing. So, I'll probably be adding as well, all right? Um, hope that helps, Brian. Good question, though. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, but yeah, let it let it confirm. I do average, I do want to average down. I still believe in it. It's better to remain open. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna average down unless it just has like a because like we bought them for what 170, a dollar seventy. So okay, they're down, but you know what I mean? They were down way worse and they recovered. And you know, if if, if a five to eight point update, they could easily be back to even. So if you have an account where you can't afford to double down or you can't afford to average down, then don't, then don't. Okay. But I'd say this, if it gets back to even, right, you probably would want to either take profits or take some size off because um, like you just want to manage the risk like with it. Okay. You want to manage the risk with it. Cool. 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 Uh, let me see. Da -da -da. Okay, well, strike. Okay, question. Okay, great. Okay, with the oh, with the STRN and the post today, 
was the buy-in 335 to 360 and then sell at 370. I'm sorry, buy in 335 to 340 um, and then sell at 370-ish. Was that one, one that you guys played, Justin? Correct. That's okay. correct. Okay. Um, yeah, so the so is that what the buy-in was? Yeah, so that was like a little scalp, just like a little warm-up, yeah. Okay, so yeah, he, I'm sure he probably posted, hey, this is where I'm going to look to enter and this is where I'm going to look to exit on a yeah so it broke 360 and then it got to 371 and it couldn't get past that yep yep um okay cool 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 dave says can you let b b nab in we did okay okay uh jason says can you um discuss shop and why they would sell the news. So go to shops chart real quick. Okay, cool. Okay, to me, to me, um, because Amazon was up what? Uh, I think at the highest point today, it got back to like, it was almost up 100 today. It was up like 90 at one point, I believe. It was up at 35, 90 something. So that's about 30 points higher than it is now, which we're about 60. So yeah, it was at 90. So to me, I think um, um, I think they it was good news. They sold off some of the news and it was just some additional profit taking because it's ran up to 1700 plus. And now um amazon ran so a lot of money went out of shop from profits and probably ran into amazon and now i think if shop holds this level right here at about um you can see the bottom bodies of all these candles it's like 15 let me see here on mine uh go go higher a little bit higher justin yeah the bottom of those bodies of that bunch sure. yeah you see it's like yeah like it's right about 15 50 I would look to see if 1550 would hold and it looks like it has that that would definitely be an area where you could bounce to go higher. Okay. Um, but to me, yeah, cause it was great news. You know, I think for those of you that don't follow it, uh, we were posting it on our side. They had, um, they had 20% year over year growth on their black Friday revenue. Um, so like, I mean, that's pretty big for a company as big as shop with the revenue that they have, you know, it's not like they have 100k revenue and they did 120. <laughs> you know what I mean? They probably did like a billion, the 1.2 billion, which is pretty big. Okay, like that's a big, big, big increase. So yeah, I think it was probably just a uh, a a they sell the news and some profit taking in there, and then the money flew uh, flowed into um, Amazon and Google. You know, some of those bigger names. Um, so yeah. Hopefully that answers your question, Jason. But I, I still really like shop and the fact that it got beaten down today. If you could have caught it at, at 1550 and caught like the 1700s, like this thing, this thing definitely has a 50 to 60 point move in it, especially if Amazon comes out talking about how well their Black Friday was. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's confirm. Tiana microphone. Okay, Andrew, Eli, I got a question on the TA on different hourly charts for the microphone. Yeah, do you want to unmute yourself and ask? Yep. Can you guys oh. hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, brother? Nice. Thank you guys for this time and Q&A session. Awesome, awesome oh, community course. support. Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, my question, if, if you guys could just talk about a little bit of, of doing technical analysis, diff, you know, the differences of doing it on one hour versus two hour versus four hour charts, mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing MACD curling on those different time frames, looking at MAs for support resistance levels, golden or death crosses, you know, talk just a little bit about using those different time frame hourly charts, please. Yeah, 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 no problem. Um, is there a certain chart you want us to look at specifically or just in general of like what we'd be looking at? Just like what like when we see when we first click on a chart? Hmm. Um, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I have some OTC plays that, that uh, um, you know, it's really, it's really for me just, you know, about allocating capital, you know, like I'm, I'm working with a small account and, you yep. know, 
trying to start with under 10 grand and, you know, just seeing where I can catch more short-term runners, yeah. um, you know, and, and just be building my account, Definitely. catching those 15 to 30% winners and rinse and repeat, reallocate capital. So it's, yeah, it's, you know, gotcha. gotcha I get, gotcha. you know, I get, you get, you could do one, um, look at, um, look at MJWL, you know, OTC play. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. So what I would do, and I think what, what Justin always does too, is we're always going to start our, our technical analysis. We're typically going to click to the higher time frames. Always want to see, you always want to zoom out, right? Yeah. You want to see, Hey, what the hell is going on with this chart? Okay. Um, like, is it in a uptrend? Is it in a downtrend? You know what I mean? Is it above yeah. MAs? Is it far extended, right? Has it caught in news? What has, how has it reacted on earnings, right? You want to understand what the hell's gone on in the past because if you catch yourself staring at shorter time frame charts all the time, something could have a huge update but still be in a downtrend or vice versa. It can have a down day and still be in an uptrend and you could get caught off sides. That's probably the most simple. I'd say that's the most simple way to start things. Would you agree, Justin? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Always. So I always start yeah, out and then work your way in. Um, uh -huh. And it really just depends on how you're trading the stock. So if you're, uh -huh. if you're looking at it, you know, you want to more invest into it and absolutely the weekly, the daily, the four hour shows you more how it's going to play out or how it should play out you know, over a long swing, a couple of weeks, you know, to a month out, you know what I mean? And then going down to like the five minute, like the five minute is what I use most when I day trade. So what you're seeing right now is like what I, this, this is all I look at um, without the moving averages. I only use the moving averages to like find plays, you know, like entries, but when I'm day trading, it's purely um, just the candlesticks. And then I use RSI. MACD and then the accumulation distribution line with the volume shelf. Yep. So this is a perfect example. Like if you were to look at like the relative strength index, right. Um, as far as being oversold or overbought, it's right in the middle. Right. So that's great for a trader. You go, okay, it's not oversold to one side. It's not under, or it's not a um, overbought to one side. It's right in the middle. So it has room to move. It has room to move. And then you looked at the MACD on the daily was above the signal line zero right above the signal line even though it was technically a red histogram it's still positive right it's still above zero so it's still bullish on the on the it was the daily but now then you start making your way to these shorter time frames and you see oh okay look at this support and justin's already gone over this one like look at this massive support that you've got right there at uh what 0 0.110 11 or 11 cents yeah essentially 11 cents 1103 right yeah and now you're going okay um if i want to swing this thing long it even went down and touched it today yeah Again, you see so now you're like if i want to go swing this thing long you're like i'm gonna look to see hey is it gonna dip down from 11.52 to let's say even just under like 11.20 Right. And then you could put an alert in and say, I'm going to try to swing this thing because it could just be bouncing like it has each time just bounced right off that level. OK. And then so now you go, OK, the overall stock is flagging out, though. Like if you go back to the daily, it's ran and now it's consolidating. It's built in, It's built a new base. That's yeah. great. After a run up, you definitely want to see a stock do that. If it, if it runs up and then it just sells right off, then there, there was no strength behind it. It was probably just a fake breakout, pump and dump, whatever. I don't even know what uh, Magic Wheels does. But whatever it was, it had some news or some catalyst that it ran pretty high, right? And now it's flagged out, meaning it's built a base at this area. That's good. You want to see that, okay? And it looks like it's building a higher low, too, as well. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. So yep. that's good. So each, each, because guys, stocks are going to go up. Stocks are going to go down. Okay. Nothing's ever going to go up forever. Nothing's ever going to go down forever. I promise. All right. I promise. I promise. But just because something has a down day doesn't mean it's a garbage stock. It's going to go to zero. Oh my God. Everybody sell. Right. Like you could even tell on the, on when, when this, on the flagpole of this, there were days where it was raising, like it was going and it was having its move up. 
before it's consolidated. It had red days. It had days where it was down. Didn't mean it was a shit stock. Didn't mean it was going to crater, right? So you can now see, okay, this thing's flagged out. So now you want to go down like Justin did to the shorter time frames and find where can we see like where this thing could actually bounce off of for me to get an entry, right? So the two hour, I mean, you could see he's built that support in there. You see, okay, this is, this is pretty good. Like this is a good area. You know what I mean? It's, and it's bouncing in between that white line, which I believe is your VWAP line, Justin. Yes, it is. So, yeah. So it's bouncing in between that white line and, and this, um, uh, and the support level that we have at, at 1103, if I'm not mistaken, what that was. Right. And then now you go, okay, 1152 is where it closed today. Right. So you'll know, Hey, if, if tomorrow it opens above that, or it breaks down below that, tomorrow you'll know there's probably a bounce coming either at the poc line or is it going to make its way back down to 1103 you know so yeah hopefully you know that hopefully that helped um who asked that, Shit, who asked that? andrew i did yeah andrew um yep. and so yeah you know i guess just going a little bit deeper on on you know like Okay, I get you know I, I'm understanding longer versus shorter plays. You know, day yeah. day scalping, day trading, or or swinging for a few days or a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, is it is it really just that simple? On on you know, if I'm trying to look at a good entry or or to whether to sell now and reallocate my capital to something that's going to move more short term. You know. Yep um looking at the one hour mac is, is the macd curling maybe not but it is it is curling on the two hour and the four hour yeah so um you know maybe there's not so much immediate action happening you know i guess i'm that's what i'm kind of uh, absolutely yeah so what understand i'm on on what the difference of ta analysis technical analysis and macd curling and looking at moving averages support resistance levels on one two four hour charts um you know and the purposes or the, the the vision that each different time frame gives you yeah yeah so pretty much uh the macd curl so the the, the shorter time frames like the, the like the five minute and the one minute um it's going to show you essentially what's going to happen now um and the five so if you want the macd to look more so on the multiple time frames. So on the shorter time frames, you want it to be curling. If you want it to be bullish, you want it to be curling up, right? And then as you go out, the bear time frames, it doesn't have to be actually curling or crossing yet. It could just be more so where it is kind of curling up, going towards the signal line again. Yep. But you kind of want that more so on the higher time frames, and then you want the lower time frames to be curling. And crossing confirm. to confirm it. Yeah. yeah. Because so think about this, the lower time frames are going to show you the shorter or the, the moves that are going to happen in that time frame, right? So like you're pretty much going to play the five minute for things to happen Ooh. within five minutes or within that day. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Like like okay. um got it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you know, for instance, like you know, I'm I'm I have starter positions in you know, five or seven tickers, um, bigger uh, positions, bigger positions in two or three. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just playing, I'm just playing the, the momentum, you know, trying to have a goal of, of have 30 to 50%, um, equity, you know, cash account increase per week, um, you know, 30% okay. over the week, you know, yeah. kind of thing, just manage that, manage my losses, man, you know, that. And so that is, that's kind of a goal I'm trying to work for. And yeah, so I understand your guys' explanation on the, the different times. So that, yeah, that was-, that was I, I, I like, uh, so yeah, so for, um, yeah, I mean, for the higher time frames, if you're not gonna like trade it intraday, at least intraday, then yeah, definitely look at more like the four hour and the daily to the one hour, um, even down to the 30 minute can be a very good, um, if you're going to swing it for multiple days or more than okay. one day, at least yeah. the 30 minute and up are going to be your timeframes, uh, that are really going to be better for you to find an entry. 
if you want to trade intraday, though, I would stick more. You could start at the 30 and stick more down to the five and the one. Okay. 30. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking at the at the screen right now for ISPC or I, yeah, ISPC. Yes. Let me. Uh, yep. So if you want to look at the MACD, um, see how it came all the way down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would be, this kind of is like a picture perfect setup. So you have, um, so the picture perfect setup would be for a swing or for something to be bullish is it crosses to 20 MA. Um, you have the MACD curling up and then you also have the RSI going over 50 going up. So that's like pretty much like your textbook, like entry. Gotcha. Okay. Entry for any kind of entry, I guess. Yeah. So if you're looking at this time frame in the five minute, if you look at the MACD curl, as soon as it crossed, you definitely had, you know, a bump up and it stayed above the signal line. And you know you had a nice run up right okay. here, so this that would be like a good entry, I would say, that you could you know right here once you know the MACD is starting to cross or right before it's starting to cross, if it's near zero only. So if the MACD is starting to cross, like say it was starting to cross back up up here, it has um, it's more so going to reject and come back down versus if the MACD is already at zero or below the MACD will more so cross up than actually reject, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Do you guys have a preference on, on simple moving averages versus EMAs? Um, I, I, I use the eight EMA and then the 20, I use all the basics. So I just go through the 20, 100, 50, and 200. Personally on, on smaller time frames, um, like an hour or under, I like to look at the eight EMA and the 21 EMA. And on the larger time frames, I'll look at the 20, 50, and 200 simple moving average. You know, okay. but it's all it's all a preference. There's no one right way. You know, there's there's I mean, there's a there's a million strategies to make money in the market, right? Sure. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't matter like if 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 Justin using the eight EMA and the 20 MA together works for him and i say oh well i like the 8 ema and the 21 ema right mm -hmm. it's like it, who's right no 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 sure. it's not who's right it's like who just, do you make money yeah then then you're both right it doesn't matter right. you know what i mean so it's all it's all about ident identifying your strategy and what you like to see in the pattern that you see happen over and over like a lot of times on the intraday chart you'll notice you know the 8 ma um you know, there, there's, if, if it's a trend day, it usually just rides along the 8MA and just goes higher and higher if it's bullish. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah, as you can see here, yeah, if it becomes like, so once it like started this trend, it just continued. Yeah. And then once it finally broke through and had a full candle underneath the 8MA, okay, now it kind of just started being below it. Okay. And then when it broke through to the upside, it went back up, right? So you can kind of play that little bit of trend. If you wanted to like make like day trade scalps like that. Okay. Yep. Got it. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Yeah. yeah no problem. Yeah. And the last thing, the last thing I say about the SMA or the, the MA is that, yeah, definitely 200. Um, I think nine out of 10 times, it's going to bounce off of the 200. I mean, usually bounces off of each MA, but the 200, if it's, if it, if it's falling a lot, and it's been bearish and it's about to touch the 200 SMA, I would say 99% of the time, it's going to have a, a strong bounce off of that. So that's also something to look for. Yep. And, and in your experience, it bounces off the e, the 200 EMA just or as... SMA. I mean, the SMA, MA. Okay. So yeah, this is simple moving average. Yeah. So right. the 200 is definitely like, especially on the higher timeframes. Sure. Um, like on the daily four hour. What, yeah. It, yeah. To be support. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's if it's pretty bear, been bearish for a while and it's going down towards the two hundred, I more way more so I'd say nine out of ten times it's going to bounce have a good strong bounce off of that. Got it. Versus actually breakthrough, if that makes sense. yeah. Yep. Yep. And then, yeah, as we as we go through, like well, I, I mean, each sermon and everything, yeah, we'll just come up. We'll, we'll have more and more questions, and then talk more and more about the SMAs and there'll, there'll definitely be more um, actual um, yeah. things that we can look at that show examples. 
Yeah, we'll definitely show. We'll go. This last sermon on Sunday was a little bit less intense because one, we were just trying to acclimate everybody to the group, and then two, you know, we really didn't know what the hell was going to go on with all the uncertainty um, as far as COVID, Fed, you know, Biden, all this shit. We had to kind of wait, and we got a lot of answers today, right? So, um, you know, our our we're going to do a Wednesday Wolfpack recap. Um, where we kind of just recap a lot of stuff we went over on on Sunday and a lot of the tickers that we liked. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when we'll be able to talk a little bit more in depth of things that we'd like to swing and why we would like to swing them, you know, and a lot of them have to do with like MAs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, but good question. Good question, though, um, Andrew. Thank you. And if you ever have any more questions, feel free to speak up. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Jason says, last question and I'll be done. OI or volume, a better indicator. Okay. He says, I see some high OI and I tend to stay away unless both are elevated. So OI, for those that don't trade the options, it's open interest, meaning they are contracts that have been opened and not closed. So they are still open. Whoever is bought the contracts believes that the move is still going to happen for their contract to make them money. Okay, that's what the investor is thinking. So this is what I'll tell you, um, Jason. I would rather see larger open interest um, because that would prove liquidity, right? Which means it's more liquid. There's more um, um, people trading in that certain strike, which would allow you to get better entries and exits because you have tighter bid and ask prices, Okay. Now, if the volume is higher than an already pretty um, big open interest, that's pretty bullish because you have to assume that if, let's say the open interest, and I'm just making numbers up, of a certain strike is 10K, right? There's 10,000 contracts open, okay? And the volume on a certain day exceeds 10,000. You have to assume that every single um, contract over 10,000 has now been bought to open, meaning they are new contracts. So there are new investors or new traders coming into that. So the conviction level on that strike has now gone up for whichever direction they believe the move is going to go. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. So seeing, you know, you got a 10K, you got 10K open interest, and all of a sudden there's 30K volume on it on that particular day. Okay, because volume is only for that day. Okay, the volume of an option strike is only for that day. That's it. Okay, the open interest is just the amount of contracts that have been open are yet to be closed. Okay, so. Yeah, Jason, um, especially when you see like big open interest, like far out the money too, that'll definitely get, that'll definitely get your, uh, your attention. Um, but I also like to see that volume is, is elevated as well. And when it's elevated at levels that I've identified as resistance, um, like let's, for example, we're taking calls. If I see that there are, uh, you know, 10 points out the money where I can see there's resistance and there's a lot of volume and open interest on those. Like, that's good. That's good. That means that there are people seeing what you're seeing and putting their money there as well. Okay. Um, all right, cool. Hopefully that helps, Jason. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, Jesse says, can we go over trailing stop orders and recommended percentage for that? Okay, um, trailing stop. So is a trailing stop when you're already in profit? I personally, Jesse, I don't use stop losses or trailing stops me personally um, because options contracts are just so wild um, that you can be down 50% in five seconds and then you can be up 200% in 30 seconds after that, right? So, you know, why would you put a 25% stop loss in something that just had a, a big move down and then it rips back up? You know what I mean? So, Justin, when it's a trailing stop order, does that that means it's it's a trailing stop loss? Yeah, I mean I, that's, that's really profit. dependent going to be on you. Yeah, absolutely. It's mean when you're in profit. Um, okay. When you have the trailing stop lock, uh, order, um, you just want to make sure that you're at least 
I mean, at least breaking even off of it if it does decide to come back down. But, yeah. or you definitely want to have be in profit. So I definitely, that's another, you know, risk to reward on your part. Um, depends yeah, on how much you want to risk, you know, of a pullback to a reward. So yeah. um, that's kind of, yeah, depending on you. Yeah, you would need to define that risk for you. I would say this, if you have to even question it when you're in profit, I would just take the profit completely. Like, why would you even try to fuck with something that's for sure, right? And if you're scared, like, oh, I'm putting the stop loss in because I'm scared it's going to go back down. It's like, if you're scared, like, just sell right there. Just sell right there and lock it in and you'll have no more stress, like no more anxiety, right? And I would just say this just from an expertise in my you know, side, I'd probably keep that stop loss that's in profit, like pretty tight. I'd keep it pretty tight. Like I would say like 10% if I was going to play it. I don't know, Justin, how do you feel? I would, I would definitely keep it tight. to. to make I'd keep it, I would keep it tight. Yeah. Just to make sure. Um, and then the, you know, the crazy, you know, volatile momentum plays, you know, if you just keep it tight, just to make sure, cause they can have some crazy downsides, but then it could bounce back hard. So just to keep that profit in, Cause it can be, you know, one of those things where it comes down past where, you know, you had your entry, but then it'll bounce back super hard. So just make sure you take that profit and then you can always re-enter into it if you want to. Yeah. That, that usually I like that. Yeah. So that's like, that's always one thing that like, I like to always think about is I can always re-enter and there's always another play. So always. that's like something, uh, yeah. Just always have in mind. Yeah. A lot of people, they get caught up. They want to like, they want to run. squeeze the lemon and get every last drop out of the lemon. And they're just going to focus on this one lemon so hard when there's a full fucking tree of them behind. Like, you know what I mean? Like behind them that they could just, they could pick fucking 40 fucking lemons and just squeeze as much as they want and get rid of them. You know, there's never going to be one play that's going to like change your life and just make every, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's not how trading works. Okay. And don't fall in love with something. Don't ever fall in love with something. There's always, always, always going to be another trade. The market is always going to open the next day. Okay. Like, and there's always going to be an opportunity. Okay. And I always have this thing. I say, if you have to question anything about your position, then you should probably just sell it right then and there. Okay. Especially when you're in profit. Why would you leave anything to hope when you have something for sure? Okay. So just think about that. Let's say you were like, oh my God, there's all this hype on this stock. It's supposed to go big and you only got 10% on it. And everyone's like, oh, well, I'm holding for 50%. I'm holding for 100%. I'm holding for It's like, it doesn't matter what everyone else says. What matters is what is best for you. What is best for your account? Because what if you then take the 10% and then go allocate to another trade that you didn't even expect and it goes 100%. But you would have never possibly had that opportunity if you sat here trying to squeeze all the lemon juice out of this one trade that ended up not actually going anywhere. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So let's, uh, so Dave says, <clears throat> if I get a larger win quicker than expected, 100%, for example, sometimes I'll add a trailing stop, say 15% below the current option price to lock in profits at 85%, but potentially get more. The stop out price adjusts upwards as the option price keeps going with the trailing stop. It's risking 15% of your profits for a potential larger upside move. I think the alternative is if your account is big enough, cut half or whatever and leave runners. Yeah. Um, Dave typed that in the chat. Pretty well said. Um, you know, if you're, I would leave your trailing stop to be significantly less percentage than your gains. Okay. It has to be significantly less than your gains or else what's the point of doing it? Locking in and losing money because your stop was too big because you're too greedy. You know what I mean? So well put Dave. Uh, Jason says snow ER. Jason's been drinking whiskey and he's got his gambling boots on. He's fresh starts, fresh starts in his pants right now. He's locked and loaded, ready for the snow ER. That's on Wednesday. We'll keep our eye on, on the 400 calls there. Uh, I got another one on swings if I, if we're good on yeah. time. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 
Awesome. Um, what, what indicators do you guys see toward, you know, end of day to decide to swing overnight or for a few days? Um, to be honest, I like to stay, I like, to, I like to see it flag out or hold a major support into close. Yeah. So if it flags out in the close or if it's a runner in after hours and that runner f- is flagging out like a, a strong flag out, I'll pick that up right before the overall close of the day to swing over in the morning to take for like an overnight swing. So I'm really I'm, out or holding a major support in the close. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You want to make sure they don't sell it off and take profits on it. Right. Yeah. Because that's, if they're that, not selling the it off and they're, they're more than likely not going to sell it off, you know, first thing in the morning. Right. It's probably going to more, more so have a little bump in it. It'll probably attract next day buyers because yeah. it'll, see, it'll see top gainers from the day before it'll have attention. Yeah. Right. Especially like Justin's really good with that on those small caps. Like, like he's really good when it has like a nice up day and then it just flags out the rest of the day. Like I've seen him take like, like, like the market closes for me at, you know, four fifty nine. like technically to buy comments, like for the entire day and I'll, I'm Pacific standard time. So like he'll buy at like four fifty nine. I think he's done this on like Tilroy. He did it on SDC one time he bought the next morning. It's up like, 10, 10% in the pre-market and then you just sold just a quick 10% overnight. Like, and you know what I mean? You do, if you do that consistently and compound that 10%, like your account will grow and it's not going to be sexy. You know what I mean? Like no one's ever like, you know, gone and picked up a chick at the bar because they talked about the 10% that they made. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know, it's definitely not sexy, but I mean, I would rather, I would take profits over being sexy. Trust me any day of the week. Any day of the week, take the profits. Okay. Gotcha. And then, and then um, one one strategy I kind of I've kind of done with that is like find multiple of them, so multiple ones that kind of like have ran in after hours and have flagged out, or have ran during the day and flagged out, or or the major support either or. Um, and I'll pick like a hand like a handful, like maybe three. Uh, the most I've ever done is like five, and then I'll put. Um, the same amount into each one and usually usually more hit than we'll lose okay so i'm kind of like i'm kind of play. that's like where i'm like you know i guess you know hedging my are you still are you still making those mechanical of of you know setting um uh you know scaling out uh so those um, so, so those uh, those would be just whatever I would get in the pre-market. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And then I would, I would, I would reassess, I would reassess if I didn't get a bump in pre-market. So I'd reassess, um, yes, where my price targets would be. So I'd, I'd actually then create a trade plan and figure you, out. Do you use, um, do you use ATR at all other than, you know, aside or additionally to, you know, support resistance? Or resistance, you know, trying to decide when to start scaling out. Do you use ATR at all? I've just seen that a bit and actually haven't dove into it real a lot for. Um, what I, we'll look at is like kind of also how the candles are forming and then what what is happening with the volume. Okay. Essentially, is where I can. That's where I can, we'll scale out as well. So if I'm starting to see something like something kind of weird, or it's like you know, creating a top or now it's like double top topping. Then I'm like, okay, well, it's not going to bust through. So I'm going to start, I'm going to, this is where I'm going to scale out then essentially. That's very nice. Awesome. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Andrew, good question too. Good questions. (laughs) Good questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There's a, if there's none other in the chat, I still have one more. I'm, um, let it you know, fly. I'm, I'm super, I'm super new, obviously. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, no, I'm working no. on, I'm working on thinkorswim. I've actually been, uh, just gotten comfortable with the web version and I haven't made the, made the transition over to the actual, you know, native installed program. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I kind of understand I'm a real I'm, I'm entrepreneur background and business ran a business and built it to a couple million in revenue and systems and processes and software, you know, I'm, I'm Hell yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Right on brother. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I understand the mechanics of, of, 
I think I understand it. And obviously the execution is the tough part. Cool. Um, but, but um, you know, is there, is there ways to um, kind of mechanically set up trades where you can, you can just, you know, if, you know, kind of conditional mechanics to execution, like, okay, if, you know, if my breakout price is reached buy at this price, and then if the volume is, um, 10 X versus the average, then only scale out 30% at this price target. But if the volume is only four X, the, the 10 day average, then scale out more, you know, like, are there ways to mechanically, um, set up those conditional execution things? I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can, I mean, I know you can create alerts, but you're saying like, if the stock does that, it, it already like creates the order for you. Yeah. You know, like I'm just, yeah. you know, it's, it's the whole, it's the whole game of, of, of is there a ton of volume? Maybe I'm only going to scale out 30% right now. Okay, instead yeah. of 50%, you know, Oh, the volume's not really five X or 10 X, the, the average volume, you know, 10 day average, then I'm going to scale out a little bit more because I don't think it's going to go as high. Um, you know, like yeah, so that's, way- that, that's still going to have to just be on yourself, but you can create, yeah, yeah. you can create alerts like at, at breakout points or stuff like uh-huh. that. So you can create an alert, um, like automatically set it up on the chart, create the alert. So when it does happen and uh-huh. gets to your your point that you want it to go, it will, you can have it to where it just notifies you and then you can go and buy yeah. based off of that notification. So you don't have to sit there and look at a chart all day. You can chart like after hours, you can just do your like alert, set up your alerts on your lines. Sure. And then the next day, Honestly, you you technically wouldn't even have to look at any chart. You could just wait till you get an alert and then go from there because you already like set it all up. But you would still have to make the purchase on your own. But at least yeah. you wouldn't, you could go throughout your day and not have to look at a chart technically because you yeah, already did it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, I guess I'm uh, like those those limit orders, you know, if I want to sell 30% of my position or 50 or yeah. 70% of my position and I can preset those. But are there any, is there any way to make it conditional on volume? You know, like you'd have to write a script for that. Yeah. I think. That's there you go. So yeah, I you think you'd have to write a script. Don't have that. Yeah. So I, so I'll be honest with you. I just from talking with people, TOS, which is the thinker swim, which I would heavily have you uh, suggest you get that yeah, I need a transition desktop into it because yeah. I know from a storage and just like a processing power, it's going to take more on your console to run it off of like chrome or whatever you're doing it on um, oh, okay and to just have it on your um on your desktop that's great um so you can it'll improve speeds a tad which is always good especially with us with day yeah. trading but they've also told me that thinkorswim is the most um, um user friendly to actually having like scripts ran that you can create personally and written yeah no it's super and, like friendly. you can write them yeah now yeah, i'm cool. no i'm not a coder that's not not nearly anything i do like I think I'm no, me answer, neither. Like, no, me neither. Like, I'm just trying to take the emotion out of it. Of yeah. you know, if no, the price I hear is if the price is changing at X percent and the volume is 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 five times the average, then scale out only thirty percent of my position. Yeah. If it's less and it's less exciting, scale out fifty percent. You know, like I'm just trying to kind of make those mechanical take the emotion out decisions. Um, but obviously, you know, there's still some risk in trying to automate it. I'm just curious if it can be done. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I've, so you can have a script. So like here on TrendSpotter, you have script actions and you can create a multi-factor alert on a certain stock. Cool. Okay. And then you awesome. can yeah, add, I, yeah. I don't know if it can do exactly what you're asking, but I know it can do some pretty spectacular stuff and it, it can be pretty complex. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely know that. So if, you know, obviously, you know, um just yeah see your like back, you can your do background like if you price. just do, if you do some google searching and some some research yeah. i'm sure you'll be able to find some forums about people um like having custom scripts that they've written and how they trade and like how it how it helps their strategy yada yada like i i personally had to get um like there's a certain indicator that i wanted that tos doesn't carry and i was able to find the script that allowed me to put it on my tos from a like a reddit board um, in like two minutes of just oh, a simple awesome. Google search, you know what I mean? And then boom, yeah. like that. Right. And it was literally copy paste done. Like, Great. so it's, it's very simple. So I'm, I'm positive. You'll be able to find 
somebody or a forum somewhere of people talking about how they can write their own scripts. I know Damo in our group. He's one of our admins. Damo, he writes scripts. He's wrote a script on a few scanners um, and, um, and on some of the way that he has customized some of his indicators. So D-A-M-O in the chat or in the, in the Discord. Um, I don't know. You can shoot him a note. Maybe he can just maybe guide you in the right direction too. Awesome. Yeah. But he's very friendly too. Tell Great. Chris that, tell a, Chris take, you. Uh, take a look right here, Andrew. This is Trend Spider. Uh -huh. um, do you see? Uh, so this is actually, I mean, I haven't, I haven't done this, but going based off of what you wanted, you can, yeah. So you can create alert on the time frame. You pick indicator and you can pick, yeah, volume on the chart to the, uh, the uh, averages or MACD signal. Okay. So yeah, I think this this looks like yeah, equal to greater than, less than, within the range of, cross uh -huh. up, across. Yeah. So this looks like this yeah. could do exactly what you want. So this is called Trend Spider, and I think they might still have Cyber Monday sale. Yeah. What? So like, what do you guys think about Trend Spider versus just one of these broker like Thinkorswim? You know, like is it? I I, I love Thinkorswim too, and that's free. Uh -huh. uh, but I also like Trend Spider. Just I like the layout. So it's more just like a. A personal of like i just like the interface of it can you I, trade in it though or is it just i have it up charting i have it up because it, it trades live during the day so i do have it up as one of my yeah. charts you, you can't trade through it like because it's not a brokerage but it it has real-time quotes meaning yeah. it'll gotcha. follow the market real time and it'll keep up with whatever brokerage you're using um and it's it's just the interface is really easy to use and everything. It's just very awesome. simple, and it looks like this like for the script or the stuff that you want to actually do. It looks like it's very yeah, simple super as well. cool. Yeah, yeah. So I would I would definitely recommend. Looks kind of cool. I, I would recommend it. I personally do all my charting on my TOS, but I obviously have Justin that I can rely on if I need him to like pull up a chart for me in, in TrendSpider. So it's uh -huh. not like I would say I don't use it at all. Like we obviously awesome. use it for all of our calls. So yeah, I'd recommend it. And I know a lot of these things are on sale right now and you can write them all off. Um, yeah, at the awesome. End of year. Yeah, so, definitely. you know, hopefully that helps. But good question. Yeah, thank you guys. Good question. Yeah, no problem. Problem. No, that's cool. Cause We're now glad yeah, to have you. Glad to have we you. found that out now. So like, that's cool. You can build this yeah, crazy like alert system on Transpire. That's dope. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Okay, uh, DHJ or DAH, DJH says, when reading charts and trying to figure out what type of pattern is forming, if it's consolidating, making resistance, or any type of charting, in quotes, how does it have to keep that, or oh, how long does it have to keep that trend before you consider it justifiable? For example, if a stock forms what looks like a double bottom in 15 minutes, would you make a move off of that? How many times does that stock have to touch the price to be new resistance? Okay. Um, I am wondering, or, or I'm wondering if I am looking too far left to figure out a trend or well, what is it again? What I'm saying, what is he's it? saying, um, oh, like what how, stock is it? Well, there's no, there's no, he's not giving a stock example or like a ticker. He's just saying if a stock looks like it's forming a double bottom on the 15 minutes, would you make a move off of that? Like, meaning if you see it making a move, like he wants to know, to me, it sounds like he he's hesitating. He goes, am I okay. looking too far left to figure out a trend or am I hesitating on what I think I'm seeing? Well, if you I would, think you're if seeing you're it, it's probably there. If you're playing intraday, I would only look more toward, unless it's a big board, but these small, like small cap runners, I would only look towards uh, pre-market and maybe the day before, but I wouldn't look past that if you're playing on the intraday. So look at the highs and lows of maybe the day before, and then also the highs and lows of pre-market and go from there. Yeah. But I wouldn't – on the big boards, it's going to be a little bit different. I would say, yeah, absolutely. You can you can zoom out a lot more to find your, like, support and resistances. Yeah. Does that make sense? Know big if, boards if it, move a little bit different. So it's – they move a little bit slower. So it's going to mm -hmm. – you will have to go back on the bigger time frames to find, you know, your, your what you're looking for. But on, on these small cap plays, yeah, it'd be more so look at just pre-market – and the day before and not look beyond that. Yep. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I but think um, especially for um, like new resistance, I would look, you know, to make confirmation, I would see, hey, this level that it's bounced twice off of, has it bounced off it before at all? And is there a reason why it's bouncing off it twice? So you would look back and be like, you know, is this level on SPY something of a support where we could take calls off it? Like this morning, 
on spy for example like actually i'll just have you justin pull up spy real quick and we'll just we'll give an example dude you're such a spy whore <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, we just hit ten thousand percent on Spy today. Like, oh. <laughs> <You're an asshole. laughs> okay, go to. Uh, oh yeah, the five minute. Okay, what was intraday? When was today? Okay, cool. So you see right there in the morning. Um, see, and you can I'm find a island right boy. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so you see in the morning how um, how it it rejected the VWAP and it dipped down, right? So like right there, the first like. 30 minutes no just to the left of that Justin. oh sorry no no, no no to the right no like actual during trading hours yeah no oh, oh up here no 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 to the left, wait, to, the left wait. to the left to the right yeah right there so you see how it couldn't oh, rejected up... VWAP, sorry yeah it rejected VWAP, then it dipped down right it dipped down and then but before it dipped down it had a little bump and then it couldn't get through it was banging its head off resistance which we we're all saying hey 30 you know 460 370 it can't get through that it's not closing a body above that right and if you actually remember, we took puts. We took puts on it solely because we said, fuck, it is not getting through this level. Like it has tried it numerous times. It's not getting through. Then it dipped down to like that 462 level, right? And we had before we went, okay, we know that this 462 level is a big level, right? We've had it. We've talked about it before. We're like, all right, let's see. It couldn't break through it. So we're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to play calls here, Okay. And then we played calls um, uh, up, and we were like, if it can't, if it gets through the high of the day, then we're gonna, we're definitely gonna take calls. And that's when we had that big push from like 464 all the way up to like 465. Four, actually, it got up to 466, right? And we had those big calls that happened. So I would just look and just confirm. Hey, is there a reason why it's not getting through this level? Probably in the past, it's because this is a big resistance or a big support level. So a lot of times, especially when you're trading on your own at first, you're going to question everything you do, right? Because if you get burnt one time on like you thought you saw something, but it wasn't the right thing, and then it goes against you, you know, your confidence gets shot a little bit. That That's normal. That's normal, right? So you want to confirm your support and resistance levels, okay? And you can even ask the group to like... Like, hey, guys, are you seeing this inverse head and shoulders? Are you seeing this cup and handle on 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 whatever? And if, if you actually look on SPY right here on the five minute from where we talked about where it dips under the 50 and goes to the 100 day, that's actually an in, inverse head and shoulders right there. You see from the first dip, right, there's a shoulder right there where Justin's cursor is at. And then the head comes down all the way then it pops back up dips a little bit again there's the other shoulder and then and then rips back up so technically technically it's an ugly inverse head and shoulders but it was there and i know someone asked they said is this an inverse head and shoulders on spy and we all went yeah shit and i went fuck no it is for sure so let's 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 put calls on our watch list right and then we said shit if this thing gets through like uh 460 like if it gets through 464 pretty much like we're taking calls we're gonna take calls and that's what we did okay so hopefully that helped definitely guys feel free to ask questions about like if you're seeing am i seeing this on a certain chart pattern am i seeing the right pattern am i not what are you seeing that those are all great questions not should i buy this should i sell this those aren't the questions <laughs> okay so hopefully that makes sense and then D -A -D -A -D -J -H, I know I see you on the option side in this. I see your um, your name pop up, so I know you're on the option side. Definitely feel free to ask, man. Confirmation helps when you're, you know, first starting out or just a little unsure. Um, you know, definitely feel free to ask. Okay, brother. Um, okay, cool. So, ba -da -ba -dum, ba -da -dum. okay, we're going about an hour and a half so far. Any any last questions, guys? <clears throat> I think we've lost a few people here. Um, I'll ask another one. Uh, I know I saw you guys have in your in your Discord um, a channel about uh, setting up scanners. I can't remember the uh -huh. scanner setups. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, do you guys have? I haven't dug into that yet um just just joined this last week 
cool. uh, do you guys have um stuff in there like what i was just talking about about you know alerts for if volume is 5x the average 10x the average if the 21 ma is crossing over above the 200 um are all those kinds of you know tricks and whatnot yeah those are all things that you can write, and- yeah those are all things you can write scripts on for sure uh, that channel is there for ideas to be bounced off each other and if anybody wants to share any scanners that they have customly made um like in the past um but yeah i, I you know i i personally haven't spent too much time in that channel but i know i saw some of the ogs in there talk about some of the scanners that they did have or used um but it's always a good place to start um, to ask questions for sure. Cause you could always spark interest of people that have the same, you know, interest of what you're looking at or maybe your strategies of how you trade. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, just catching the daily runners, you know, I mean, it's something that's up 20 or 30% in, in pre-market and um, trading so five times their average volume. I actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I use Benzinga pro is what I use to find, um, to find the runners, essentially. Okay. To so find you're the not line. doing that in your own. You can do that. No, program. you can set that in. You can set there is there is like a gainer scanner that you can set for sure, and like a volume scanner. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've sure. seen that's, I've seen some YouTube videos video. on how to do it in Thinkorswim. I just haven't dove into the. the yeah, 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 yeah. You can definitely do that into that for sure. Yeah, you, you can set it to where like, okay, it's passing this volume, then it, it will trigger mm-hmm. your your alert for that, mm-hmm. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Uh-huh. So, yeah, okay, that makes channel, more sense. That makes more sense. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're got, you don't, you guys don't know if your channel in here, you know, has like um, tutorials on setting those up. I, I got to just dig in. Uh, uh, no, it does it only The has channel we have is ones. more for discussion. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, no one else has asked. Well, we could find videos and make sure that we. Yeah, get no, you can, there. dude. I'll, I'll tell you this. You I, can do that. I went to YouTube University, um, <laughs> meaning I, I still look up things on YouTube like how to blah 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 and TOS. Let's find some videos though. We can add some videos. Yeah, we could we could find some that we've liked or seen in the past or that we like and we've watched now. Um, that could hopefully help. That you know that it, it couldn't hurt. Um, yeah, I'll be looking this week too, and I'm I'll that's when everybody can post in there, right? Yeah. So I'll, yeah, absolutely. I'll share. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks, cool. Andrew. Oh, yeah, always, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's a lot of the channels are for people to be able to just bounce ideas off or share, you know, successes or share. Um, like videos that they've watched, you know, ultimately Justin and I would like to have a full YouTube library where we can answer every single question, but like, you know, that's infinite. There's going to be an infinite, I mean, an infinite number of videos because there's going to be an infinite number of questions if that makes sense. But we are working for you guys to get more content from the educational side to you. Awesome. All right. I think, I don't know, no one else is adding any questions in here we have a couple people dropping off no problem um this kind of was an impromptu meeting um but if nothing else uh you know i have nothing else guys just continue to just uh you know educate yourself on how to navigate the discord right um continue to define your goals define your risk always continue to do fucking less okay and I think there were some people that got caught guilty of just trying to do a little too much today, right? And uh, maybe they got caught off sides or they overtraded or, or they, they broke some rules, right? And they ended up losing some money. So, you know, always, always err on the side of doing less because you don't lose money if you do less, I promise, okay? And it's hard to do, I get it, but build that discipline and I promise you will be successful. Yeah, you will be successful, especially if you're new. It's okay to sit and watch and learn and understand how things move and how the na- and how we navigate things like in the chats. Okay. There's always going to be another day to make money just because you sat today out. Doesn't mean you don't get to make money tomorrow. I promise. There's always going to be another play. Okay. I'll leave it with that. Justin, you want have final words. No, nah, that's good. Okay. Get back at it tomorrow. Yeah, guys, right back at it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, just focus on like one trade a day. That's it. And then I mean, if you, 
uh, if anybody's in here that's new that like was there earlier today just notice how like i traded earlier in the day and then my last call was at four dollars and then that was it and then we you know we were chilling scaled out on profits and that was it yeah Guys, so do, do less the, yeah. the most volume is in the first hour and the last hour and so when there's volume there's movement and we can trade movement we can't trade when it drifts sideways right because yeah, i'm going to be honest when, when we start to like power hour can be good absolutely and then you can find runners in after hours but if you're going to start trading in the afternoon or in after hours the liquidity is not going to be there as much yeah and you could you can go have a buy-in and then that shit drop like 50 cents, like instantly, because there's no liquidity. So the next market maker is just going to fill in and now you're down instantly off of your, you know, your buy-in because there's no volume, there's no liquidity. So just got to be careful with that when you guys are trading in the afternoon and um, after hours. Yep. I guess the same, same could be said for early pre-market. When you get to two hours before open, to an, especially an hour before open, then yeah, volume starts to come in. But when when the pre-market first opens up, it's the same thing. There's sometimes you'll sit there on the ask and you have you have the same as the ask, but it doesn't fill. Yeah. Because there's just no liquidity. So yep. it's got to keep that in mind that the best time is definitely like more, I'd say an hour to two hours before the market. But if not, yeah, wait for the first 30 minutes does to settle and then start trading up until you know the afternoon. That first hour and a half is always yeah. good. So if you wait the first the first thirty minutes to to confirm whatever trend or direction, you're gonna be in good shape. All right. Um, shit. Other than that, well said, Justin. Good way to end it. Um, we will go ahead. Any trade ideas that we see, we'll post, guys. We'll we'll get you guys the information you need. And as always, yeah. uh, any suggestions you have, we have a suggestions channel. So yeah, oh, just yeah. feel free. Um, this this group is about you guys, not us. So. Yeah. Just yep. always let us know how you know how we're doing. If you need anything, or if we could improve on anything, so just let us know. Yeah, one hundred percent. Nothing set in stone. Definitely, yeah. there's a way we can help. Guys, don't feel like you're nagging or you're being like too much or whatever. This is all for how we can best serve you guys. Okay, so feel free to speak your uh, speak the honest truth. The ways we can help or better anything, and we'll always appreciate it. Cool. All right, we'll see you later on. Sweet. Thanks a lot, guys. Right, thank in the pre-market. Thank you, Andrew. Later, guys. All right, see ya.